Hi everybody and welcome to Daily Scuba News. So last week the US Coast Guard told the National Transportation Safety Board that it agreed officially with seven recommendations for major changes to the safety guidelines and regulations that include major changes to mandatory security patrols, better smoke detectors, better emergency exits, and better safety management systems. This is all due to the tragedy that occurred on Labor Day 2019 when the Conception dive boat caught fire and 34 people died. The safety board concluded that these were all contributing factors to what happened in 2019 and if these were to a higher standard on board then the tragedy could have been avoided. Now, while a lot of the blame was directed at the owner of the conception, the board also pointed blame at the Coast Guard themselves, stating contributing to the undetected growth of the fire was the lack of US Coast Guard regulatory requirements for smoke detectors. Um, the Coast Guard at the time hadn't implemented the NTSB's previous recommendations for mandatory safety management systems for small uh, passenger boats, despite a decade of calls by the NTSB and had allowed other vessels like the Conception to have poor egress. Now, the Conception fell into a perfect storm of factors uh, because it was a certain age, it was exempt from certain regulations, some safety measures were voluntary, and just a lot of things all went wrong at the same time. And at the moment, all of the evidence points towards a fire that broke out, uh, started by charging or recharging lithium ion batteries that blocked both emergency exits to the lower decks. Now, the National Transport Safety Board has been recommending safety changes and updates for years now, but they don't have the authority to actually enforce these changes. They can only really recommend changes from what I understand. It's actually up to the Coast Guards themselves to check these vessels and make sure that they are up to scratch. So going forwards from the 1st of January this year, vessels will be required to log nightly roaming checks to actually log them so that they can be checked to make sure that crew are routinely checking all areas. Connected smoke detectors are going to be mandatory, not just individual smoke detectors in key areas, but an actual connected network of smoke detectors so that if one goes off, they all go off. Emergency exits need to be larger and located in more logical places so that if one exit is blocked then there is a slim chance that the other will be blocked by the same issue. And that was one of the main problems on the conception. The fire that blocked the main emergency escape also blocked the backup exit because they were simply too close to one another and they effectively exited into the same area and that's exactly where the fire was unfortunately. And hopefully now that the Coast Guard have agreed to even more better changes, remember they uh, they recommended seven changes, these are just four changes that have already been passed into law, um, these extra changes will be passed into law as well and they do it as quickly as possible. Now this obviously um, is a benefit for safety but in the short run it is going to hurt a lot of dive charters because they now have to pay to bring their boats up to specs when they've already been suffering a lot from the pandemic anyway. I know that's a really selfish way to look at it and think about things but it is going to hurt a lot of dive contractors because they can't go straight back to work because their boat may not be up to specs and they haven't been earning much recently thanks to good old covid so this is going to hurt some of the u.s dive industry in related news the captain of the boat the conception pleaded not guilty to 34 counts of seaman's manslaughter this week for his misconduct negligence and inattention to his duties he appeared in front of judge gene rosenbluth by video uh, with friends and family of those who died watching remotely uh, and reportedly spoke very little, very short answers and pleading not guilty. Uh, he's expected to be released on a $250,000 bond. Now, this side of the tragedy, for me at least, isn't as important as updating the safety measures. Making sure that something like this never ever happens again is far more important to me than making sure that someone else suffers for what happens. Obviously, it has to go through the legal system properly, but I do think it's a bit more important that we focus more on getting the safety guidelines around the world up to scratch. 
So when you're next on a dive boat and you're going to sleep on the dive boat and you're charging your gear, just maybe think a bit more about safety because electrics on a boat, they're not the same as outlets on your home. So do be careful. Thank you for watching and of course, safe diving.